Hey everybody, Mario here, otherwise known as White Tomb on the interwebs, and welcome to another edition of the 52 Review. Now with 50% more Marvel. So I'm going to do what I do, and just talk about what I got. So let's get started with some Marvel stuff. Okay, so you know that so far I'm not exactly a big fan of the Marvel Now stuff. And I'm not really feeling it. That is until I picked up New Avengers 1 and 2. Now, I thought it was going to be the same old thing, blah, 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 blah. No, uh, they might as well have called it the Illuminati Avengers. Because if you remember that secret society of six people that were like, hey, we should run the world secretly for good. And it didn't go so well in the end. Well, they're back. Minus Xavier, who's busy being dead. Spoiler alert. Have decided to reform together after a very dire and looming threat to the entire planet comes at them. And I, I like the fact that of all the people that decided to bring this group back, it was Black Panther because, as you may or may not remember, spoiler alert, he was the one that was adamantly against this group even existing in the first place. But even he knows that this is kind of way over his head, so brought everybody back. Now, as you know, I was questioning why Hickman was working on Avengers, since that seemed like a series that, I don't know, didn't need that overall big picture humanistic kind of view thing. But it makes perfect sense, him working New Avengers. I mean, the, the Illuminati group, for better or for worse, in their minds, they think that they are doing the ultimate good, good by having the secret group meet and do things covertly. And it's nice for Hickman to bring him back and actually have them do that instead of being, you know, semi-dictators who did dictatorish-like things and kind of screwed things up. And well, just read World War Hulk. You'll you'll you'll, you'll know what I mean. I have really enjoyed this series. Uh, the first two issues, I mean, issue one, right off the bat, I was already intrigued and. Um, you know, it, it. I understood what happened, what's been going on with the Black Panther, Wakanda, uh, how the others were even involved. The fact that you know we have everyone who's still alive in this group is back, and you know that whole big picture, humanistic view, the outlook, uh, intellectual dance that Hickman is known for when he writes. Perfect, perfect fit in this series, and Steve Epting. He's not a stranger to me. I loved him when he worked on Captain America. I can still love his, his work uh, here in New Avengers. Uh, there, I really don't have anything more to say other than you should check it out. These are actually great reads, and so far, besides Deadpool, the only real interesting thing that Marvel now has done for me. So I decided to hang in there and, you know, continue to read Avengers. I, I picked up Avengers 3. Better? It's a step up from the last two issues. I mean, I, I really get what they're trying to do here. And it was sort of pulled off successfully. Yeah, half successful. I don't, I don't know. Having that godlike figures of ex Nilo as... You know, I mean, he had his reasons. He, I really wasn't understanding. I mean, Hickman was trying to make us feel sympathetic for the guy in some parts. And then he was trying to make him look like freaking Snidely Whiplash and others. It, I, w I don't know, I'm, I'm, I didn't know how to feel, uh, I understood the Avengers, I understood what Steve Rogers was going for, I mean, I'm glad he pulled it off, more or less, but then that De Deus Ex Machina twist happened at the end, or should I say Deus Ex Universa, you'll, you'll know what I mean, and I'm shocked as hell as who Captain Universe decided to have as a host, Huge step up for her, I guess. On one hand, it kept me interested enough that I guess I'll read Avengers number four. But on the other hand, then I see new Avengers and you're like, you gotta step up, Avengers. You gotta step up. The last Marvel thing I want to discuss, Deadpool number four. You know, I've seen a lot of Deadpool stuff over the years. I've seen Deadpool a lot of, do a lot of ridiculous shenanigans over the years. Now, I'm not saying this is the best one, because there's a lot of hilarious Deadpool shenanigans. I am saying, though, that getting into a cage match with Lincoln, spoiler alert, 
That's up there. I would say that's top five material. It, I was literally busting a gut each page that I read that it featured that scene. Literally busting a gut. I was in tears because I was laughing so hard. I was gasping for air because I was laughing so hard. I, um, Brian Potion, well done, sir, because you have somehow managed to carry the torch that Daniel Way gave and have ran with it. And I, I mean, I, the, the whole plot of the, the necromancer and the necromantic presence trying to take over or destroy America is secondary to how Deadpool responds to all of that. That then, to me, that's always been the key critical factor when reading Deadpool comics. How does Deadpool respond to things? And brilliant. Uh, I, I <laughs> I'm thinking about it right now, and I'm really struggling not to like bust a gut here or now. I love this comic. I love this series. I'm so glad it's not the only thing I love about the Marvel Now uh, comics. But Deadpool's up there. Pick this up, please, please, please. You need a laugh. Pick this up. So that takes care of the Marvel stuff. Now let's cover my old baby boat, the DC. So I also had to get caught up with the Batman Incorporated storyline, or as I'm calling it, <laughs> the most ridiculous custody battle in the history of ever. Seriously, that's what it all boils down to. Uh, until Talia throws a curveball and she's like, oh no, that's not what it all comes down to. What does it all come down to? Because now it's starting to seem like she's like a superwoman scorned, you know? It's, it's weird. I really hope it gets resolved soon, though. And Damien's just kind of like involved in this tug of war. He's like, Mom, Dad, why don't you get along? Well, not really, but you know, I'm pretty sure deep down he's thinking that. Talia pulled up a ridiculous move and nearly took out most of Batman Inc. I mean, wow. And it's kind of heavy what's going on there. I mean, we might see some people that were established in Batman Inc. a while back die. It's very real. And, and the fact that there might... I, I started to get a little bit of foreshadowing as to who else might die. A big character. Um, I don't know how this is going to end. It's kept me intrigued in, enough to make me want to continue to find out. There have been some low moments, mainly Talia's reasoning for doing all of this, which just sounds like having she's having a bit of a hissy fit. <sighs> Batman's reaction hasn't exactly been great. Oh, Talia, why are you doing this? I loved you, girl. Come back. It's not much better. Anyway... So I had a bit of a, of a feeling of who might kick the bucket soon. And then someone leaked things. Leaked the cover of issue 8. And... Rrr, no. I don't like that. If it was some douche that was doing that, that was not cool. But if it was like an inside job, like DC had a hand in this, that's even worse. Still, this is a good issue. Good storyline. Grant Morrison. Stay a little bit longer, please. I, 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 so continuing the Throne of Atlantis storyline, I read Justice League number 16. Wow. Uh, I feel bad for Aquaman. Arthur is stuck be on a literal rock in a hard place right now. He's stuck between loyalty to his brother and his family and his people and, of course, loyalty to his comrades in the League. And, ooh, things happened... I mean, rapidly. And, of course, the biggest overreaction by certain members of the League. Namely, Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman. Kind of saw that one coming. We're finding out some hidden truths about Arthur's past. About why he renounced the throne. Things like that. And the fact that everything, all the bad shiz that's going on right now, was actually orchestrated by Arthur himself when he was still in his... Ragey emo -y states back in the day. Man, I don't I don't know how this is going to play out. I mean, I have a feeling, but I don't like my theories because they don't end well. But I don't really see this ending well, period. So, there it is. 
it's not like the strongest issue of Justice League that I've read, but it's it's a it's a decent issue. It's it's a great issue to continue the Throne of Atlantis storyline, which is gonna wrap up real soon. Ivan Reese's artwork, you know, it's great. It's fantastic. Ivan Reese is is an awesome artist, and uh, fits in well. I miss Jim Lee, but obviously Jim Lee is doing like a million and one things. So, but if there has to be a sit in, I'm glad it's Ivan Reese. We'll see what happens, and I want to see what happens with. Aquaman, really. I mean, that's that's who I really care about in the storyline. Because, obviously, it revolves around him. Pick this issue up. It's pretty good. This story arc is pretty good. Finally, Batman. Number 16. Oh boy! Scott Snyder. I love you and I hate you. I love you because you continue to bring top-notch storytelling and writing into the Batman comics. I hate you because you continue to bring top-notch storytelling and writing into the Batman comics. That makes me want to read it more. It makes me twitch in anticipation for the following month. And I have no inkling of predicting of where it's going to go next. I mean, seriously, I can predict everything else. Every other comics that I've talked about today, I have an idea of where it's going to go. Once again, I have no idea where this is going to go. Da! And how freaky looking is the Joker? I mean, it seems like every iteration has its own freaky look up to the Joker, and this one just freaks me the hell out. I mean, yeah, it's stupid, unrealistic, uh, the fact that the Joker still has the, his old face strapped around his face, and... He's not, like, dying of an infection or infected at all. It makes him freaky looking. Furthermore, now we have to wonder. I mean, that question is, is in everyone's head. Does the Joker know who everyone is? What about Alfred? Is he even alive? And as for the rest of the family, I mean, it's called death of the family for a reason, but we still don't know how that's going to play out. We might get a bit of an unsettling twist at the end. The, whole, the fact that the Joker thinks that Batman has gotten old and fat and useless because he's relied, he has a family, he, ha, he, it, the, he feels that they've made him weak. So the Joker has become the jester of his court and has tried to make him strong by screwing the hell out of everything. It, it, it really has been a good story arc. It's about to end, which, I mean, I guess it had to, but so soon? And... Is there anything I need to left to say about Greg Capullo's artwork? I mean, you've seen it in the last, what, 16 or so issues? 15, actually, because he didn't do number 12? That's just the color. I mean, everything, everything just looks so good. It, it rolls so well, well with Scott Snyder's writing. I've, I've talked about this before. You, I love it when... It just is so natural and such a perfect mix, mesh, when writer, penciler, artist, their works just mesh together and combine into such an amazing piece of work. And that, I continue to praise Scott Snyder's Batman run for that reason. Greg Capullo, wow. I, I really don't know how this is going to end. I, I know issue 17 is out by the time you see this. And I will probably have read it by then. So I'll let you know real soon. So that does it. Uh, the only thing I gotta say is uh, read Atomic Robo. I got two more volumes. They're really good. Read it. Read it. Read it. I, I mean, yes, I'm gushing. I sound like a, it's like a gushing goose. But they're really good. Read them. Alright, so that about does it for now. If you have any thoughts, comments, questions, or whatever, please leave them below in the commentary blot. I do read them, and I do try to get back to them as I go along. Guys, I know, thanks for bearing with me. I'm, like I said, I, I do what I can when I can, and I will try to make another 52 review video soon. Till then, live in core, going to my mouth.